the Sunfoil project, second and third prototypes. This is the second prototype, 20 watt silicon panel, rated at 20 watts at 48 degrees Celsius, fared in sheet aluminium and pop rivets with bits of old road sign. On the Subaru Brumby, positioned so that its aerodynamic downwash does its best to smooth the flow over the rear of the cabin. Underneath there are air inlets along the lower skin. These draw cold air from the shady patch when it's stationary and at highway speed six and a half litres per second goes into those holes. The hotter they are the less power photovoltaics produce. It's really good to cool them down so we have to get rid of the hot air and these vents are flush with the lower surface of the glass. So the hot air expands, cold air goes in to replace it. It's a thermosiphon driven air pump, 35 watts total functional work stationary. The Sunfoil feeds the charge controller. And even late afternoon underneath the carport, it's charging. So next time, young fellow my lad goes to start his engine, his battery's going to be as near as full as damn is to swearing. Okay. Of course, during the day on the highway, the waste heat that would normally drive the thermosiphon actually forms a very low output solar thermal ramjet. It increases the output of these boundary layer control vents by 5 watts each on a hot day. Not much, but every little bit helps. The third prototype is a different style of a panel. It's a gallium arsenide panel. It's still rated at 48 degrees Celsius, but it's 37% larger in area than a normal silicon panel would be. So it collects a fair bit of heat, and each one of its boundary layer control vents increases its power from 22 watts in the moonlight to 37 watts in full sunlight. There we can just see the blast tube that blows compressed air at 100 and 20 kilometres an hour onto the underside of the trailing edge skin so that the compressed high speed air by Calander effect draws the airflow over the trailing edge so that this facet actually does not stall. Therefore the trailing facet of the faceted aerofoil produces a downwash and the downwash from the trailing facet sticks the slipstream over the roof of the car, over this complicated cascade and the idea is to try and stick the slipstream from the roof onto this bit of glass. I can't do it at less than 125 to 127 kilometres an hour but when you achieve that you get something like a 7 to 12 percent aerodynamic drag reduction compared to the unmodified vehicle. So Having a wing in ground effect, a ventilated faceted aerofoil using ram scoops for boundary layer airflow control means that even without the electrical effect of the solar panel, yeah, I get maybe a 4% aerodynamic drag burn reduction. There's 16 of these ram scoop compressors. And I know they work because <coughs> if you start a journey with the top of this panel covered in condensation, 
in still air at sundown. 15 or 20 kilometres down the road and all the condensation has gone from the panel of the glass above the ram scoops because when you compress air it gets heated and the heated compressed air dumps its heat into the glass at the front of the panel. So here we have the only two solar thermal ramjets in captivity on the third planet out from the sun. Not a bad effort when you think that the original idea was to finish charging the battery after switching off the engine when the alternator had not had enough time to do the job. They don't call us Aero Hillbilly Enterprises for nothing, eh? The Brumby's burning 4.2 litres of fuel less per week, regardless of how often it's driven. And the 1800 Touring Wagon is burning 5.33 litres per week, regardless of how often I drive it. I'm saving 760 mils per day because the solar panel makes it up to the battery for the fact that uh, there's sulfation happening, the dashboard clock and the stereo memory chip are sucking away at the battery all the time. The way things stand at the moment, the only excuse for not driving a solar electric hybrid piston retrofit is because you're too rich to think it matters how much fuel you burn, your waste and how much carbon emissions you produce for the atmosphere. Or you think you've got a perpetual motion pulley at the front of the engine and that's why your car doesn't burn any fuel in order to make electricity. Or maybe you just don't care. Anyway, fit yourself a sunfoil. It makes really good sense. Ciao.